Okay, I'm taking a bit of an opportunity here. Uh, I've got a brand new set of pipes that just came in. Uh, quite literally, we're sitting on the front porch when I got home. Uh, these are a set of pipes for a gentleman <clears throat> for a, a firefighter band over in Northeast Arkansas. It's probably about the fourth set that they've uh, bought through me. Same manufacturer, uh, essentially the same pipes, uh, a little bit different on the, some of the uh, engraving. But anyway, so I just thought I would take this opportunity to kind of give you an idea of what um, what the pipes may be like when they get here. When they these were made in Scotland from a uh, reputable maker, very great maker. Um, and a lot of people think that uh, they they are truly put together, set up, and that anybody should be able to get them out of the box, put them together, and golf and play a gig. You know, they're that ready. Doesn't happen. Uh, if they're made locally, <clears throat> that might be pretty close to it, but <clears throat> because of climate and everything else, uh, sometimes they just need set, setting up and uh, maybe a little bit of tweaking or something of that nature to truly get them ready. So anyway, so I got them out of the box. The box that came in, and it, they're just individually bubble wrapped in uh, each drone and the drone piece was individually bubble wrapped. There were no reeds in it whatsoever. Uh, reeds were separate. Actually, in this case, there were no channel reeds, uh, but there were drone reeds. They came, these, these particular ones came with easy drones, and they were in the uh, in the box. And I've already taken them out, put them in, and at least uh, kind of give them a quick blow just to make sure that they're somewhat ready. A couple things that you'll probably notice, especially when they've been made, um, in this case, in Scotland, and then shipped all the way over. Uh, they've been in <coughs> the um, airplane, been sitting out front, things of that nature. Um, you notice that this, pretty loose, okay, uh, may have dried out in the heat, stuff like that. That's just a little bit too loose. I would think that that's a little bit too loose as well. Kind of joints there. Not too bad right there. And that one may be just a smidge loose. So I, I might want that tightened up just a little bit. I'll put a little bit more hemp there. Uh, channer, again, maybe just a smidge loose. Probably just dried out, you know, uh, in transit. It may have been a lot more humid over. Uh, you'll see that they did do a quality hemp job. Okay, it may not be an absolutely perfect one, but uh, that's that's pretty darn good. Uh, pretty darn good right there. Drone stock, maybe just a smidge loose because that definitely <coughs> needs to be a little um, tighter than the other one. And you'll see that I have the uh, easy drones in there. I have not touched these, especially when they're going to a brand new Piper. For the most part, unless you're really, really good at setting up drone reads and you know exactly uh, what that Piper is going to be playing and stuff, for the most part, to start with, I wouldn't touch them a whole lot as far as moving bridles and tuning pins. But there is one thing that I will change, and this is the personal preference. You don't have to, but you can. But anyway, they do work. Okay, not a problem there. One thing, I'm trying to decide whether to actually do it on this one or not. Uh, I, may, I may not. I may go ahead and since I'm giving them to somebody else and let them have the opportunity. But something I normally do to my own, and it doesn't matter if it's an easy drone, if it's a Y jet, uh, if it's any of the drone reads, they tend to come with this rubber sleeve on the end. Um, <clears throat> they work, they, you can stick them in the drone, and they will stay there. The thing is, these will go in just about any uh, make of, of pipes, but not everybody makes the drone seat exactly the same size, in the same diameter, in the same taper and stuff. So that while that rubber does very well and it will catch, in this case, I'm getting probably about a quarter inch of reveal left, it will fit in there nice and tight, and unless knocked around, it won't come out. I have a tendency personally, and here's an easy drone, it's just base read, to take the rubber off 
and then to wrap it with hemp to get a very, very custom fit. Depending on the taper of the bore, I may need to put more here and less here, um, or whatever, but I try to get a custom fit because this is compressible and as much contact as possible here and I try to get it to where it seats in, the, if this were the drone seat, try to get it in there and make it seat all the way in if at all possible. I don't want there to be a gap in there. That's your own personal preference. If I were going to do that here, I would simply, if it's somebody else's, I would try to take maybe some pliers or something, something that will grip this very lightly, break it loose from uh, the, the synthetic wood that's in there, twist it off, take that off where they can put it back. If it's my personal one, I'll never put that back. I just cut it off. And then I wrap my black wax temp, because this is going to get very wet, black wax temp, and I will wrap it around like that. But I think for this one for right now, since I don't personally know the gentleman it's going to, uh, I know the band that it's going to, uh, I'm putting it in. I'm getting only about a quarter inch reveal. A rocket. It's fairly, fair, getting there pretty good. And we've got a Canmore bag with a zipper. So even if it was to eventually fall out, it's easy to retrieve. It's not like it's going in a sheepskin bag. But I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to double check all these hemps. And uh, like these up here that are a little bit loose, they have black wax temp on it. And uh, I'm probably going to snug that up a little bit with unwaxed yellow hemp. And the reason I use the unwaxed yellow hemp is these, this joint here, the top joints in the drones tend not to get quite as, um, they don't get as wet. So you don't have to worry about them, uh, absorbing moisture as much. <coughs> getting too tight, plus the unwaxed uh, hemp, and it's actually a linen thread, is a little bit slicker than the wax. And the whole goal on these top joints, to the top of the tenors and the middle joint on this one, is for tuning, I want to be able to use two fingers to tune it. Okay, I want to be able to twist it and pull it down, twist it and push it up with two fingers, but I want it tight enough that once I set it there and I start playing that it's not going to wobble and come down and get out of tune. I want it to set it and it stay there. I don't want it to wobble and as like it right here it, it would wobble and I could see it moving you know even an eighth of an inch would be enough to keep it to, to make it go out of tune. So basically what I'm going to do being the dealer in this case is I'm going to check all these. I mean, the first thing I do is I go through and I'll make sure that uh, all the pieces are tight. I'll check all of that. Uh, I'll check all these hemp joints. I'll make any adjustments that need to be made to these hemp joints. The drone reeds, plug them in, make sure that they're going to seat in there. They're not going to come out. And I'm going to play the pipes. I'm basically going to make sure <clears throat> I may not spend hours and hours and hours like as if I was going to take them to competition, but I'm going to try to make sure that they are to the point that I could take these to band practice. Uh, pull them out and play them in band, and the I and the band both would be perfectly satisfied with them. Uh, that's that's the value added you get going through a dealer. Uh, I could have these drop shipped directly to uh, the person who's buying them, and I uh, would save some ship, you know, some time, or save a lot of time. Uh, I've already got his money, so uh, you know, and any problems that come up, you know, I could get with them later or something like that. But you know, it definitely. They would think that any problems were on the manufacturer. Uh, but this way, I know that when I hand them to them, I'm giving the value added of my experience, my expertise, such as it is, uh, that the pipes are going to perform. I'm going to look like a better dealer. Uh, the manufacturers, uh, the, the uh, purchaser is going to have uh, as good an opinion of the manufacturer as possible to make a quality instrument. Just nature tends to change things sometimes, so I'm trying to make sure that uh, they're getting the best instrument that this manufacturer uh, can deliver to them. So, other than that, I'll fix them to get to work.